TEDxDU provided a wealth of inspiring speakers last year. And their work did not stop after TEDxDU. Today, we wanted to update you on what a few of them are doing now. Probably the most exciting thing that's really happened is that the field of human-animal interaction work is changing really dramatically and really rapidly. In part, one of the ways that that's changing is that the National Institute for Health, for the first time in kind of the history of the field, has started to invest major funding towards long-term research in this area. And the great news is that the University of Denver Graduate School of Social Work has received one of these grants. Professors will study the relationship between children, animal cruelty, and family violence. Since TEDxDU, students interested in similar topics have sought out the school. And our favorite dog, Samantha, has been in demand as well. Thank you. Thank you, oh, good job! <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Good job, Sammy. All right, you ready? Samantha and her owner, Kelsey Hobson, volunteer each week at Grandview High School, working with students who are developmentally disabled. So kids who uh, have special needs in many cases start to lose um, their interest in some, t in some cases, maybe feel nervous or afraid or anxious to participate in a, in a school like Grandview. And Samantha, what Samantha does is gives them confidence to participate. Really, they really find this unconditional support, this reliable presence. I couldn't imagine a better life. This is far beyond my wildest dreams for the kind of work I could be doing. I have so much fun, I'm so interested, I learn something new every day. I get to work in so many new opportunities and so much of that is down to Samantha. DU student Eva Hawkinson is on the move quite literally. The mechanical engineering student was the first to take an electric motorcycle to compete in the Pikes Peak International Hill Climb. Three months later, she took on the famous Bonneville Salt Flats. She hauled her custom electric motorcycle called Kilojoule to Utah to take a run at the world's speed record for electric motorcycles. She didn't break the record. Well, at least not yet. The amazing thing that happened for me after TED uh, was it started a kind of virtual conversation with people around the world. Kim Gorgans not only interacted with people globally, she had a direct impact on Colorado. Kim helped author the state's new concussion bill that Governor Hickenlooper signed into law in March 2011. DU is spearheading a concussion education effort as a direct outcome of Kim's talk. It's called the Concussion Alert Bracelet, and it's designed to signal that the person wearing it is recovering from a concussion. So the purpose of the bracelet is really twofold. The first is to reduce the likelihood of catastrophic outcome, which is second impact syndrome. And this is a phenomena known to uh, occur in youth athletes where a second relatively minor injury can produce a catastrophic outcome or death. The second objective of the bracelet is to identify the athlete so that we can promote and optimize their recovery. And this bracelet is a huge, you know, it's a big deal. It's, it's a metaphorical cast for us who have concussions. I mean, it's a sign to show that, you know, once I take it off, I'm ready to play, I'm ready to come back. But since I still have it on, it's a good way of showing, you know, the doctor said I'm not ready. Well, I feel that if this uh, wristband is brought in uh, at the younger uh, levels, um, at the more amateur levels, that it will have a chance to then become, get some notoriety. And your first concussion allows other concussions to happen more easily and um, if someone comes back too early, yeah, I think that risk becomes even greater. So by incorporating this wristband, it allows people at a young age to save themselves from future, maybe future concussions or future head problems. It's a way for people saying, hey, we're gonna help you get better. It relieves that stress and that you know, pain that we're all taking with the concussion, we feel alone. So, I mean, the bracelet helps with the community and sort of like everybody's with you. <laughs> So we're launching this bracelet here in Colorado and hoping that it goes global. You can find more information at concussionalert.org.